Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about an adventure fantasy film called Mojin, The Warm Valley. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Thousands of years ago, a vengeful goddess created a terrifying punishment for those who defied her. A curse mark was placed on the people's shoulders, causing them to die horrifically and prematurely before they reached the age of 40. The most heinous part of this curse is that it passes down through generations, dooming all the children to the same face as their parents. For this reason, those who are cursed have been looking for two items, the dragon orb and the celestial bone. The legend states that only by combining these two artifacts can the people lift the curse that was placed on them through their ancestors. Bei is one of the people who's afflicted by this curse, and he successfully found the celestial bone inside a tomb after going through numerous monsters that killed most of his team. His friend, Professor Sun, has decoded most of the riddles on the bone and found out the location of the dragon orb which is located inside the dragon mountain. However, the magical item doesn't tell them the dangers of its location nor how the combination of these two artifacts are able to nullify the curse. One of Bay's friends, Shirley, has come back bearing some good news as she's made contact with a local family who knows the secret pathway into the mountain itself. The man quickly recruits his old teammates consisting of a large man named Kai and his friend Yuke, alongside a woman who calls herself Lin. It turns out that all three of them are cursed just like the main character, and they were also the survivors who previously took the celestial bone away from its tomb. They travel across the vast countryside, eventually arriving at a house that's right below the mountain where a woman appears and welcomes the people inside. She offers them to stay the night like previously agreed, but Bay wants to make sure that there's a way into the mountains. She tells the men that there's only one path which goes through a dangerous river, and her daughter Khan can take them there tomorrow. At night, the group sees numerous insects which appears to be fireflies and quickly run outside to enjoy the rare sight. Kai tries to grab onto one of the insects, but it bursts into flames and burns the man's hand. Khan explains that these are not fireflies as they create miniature explosions when their bodies touch other animals. The woman takes out a container where she managed to capture one of their queens. Khan explains that the flies will be attracted to the odor that the queen produces and swarms at the location where their leader has died. She demonstrates this by opening the jar, causing the bugs to follow them wherever they go. The next day, the group heads towards the mountain by traveling through perilous pathways, eventually arriving beside a lake where Khan shows them the entrance that they were looking for. As the team is heading towards the mountain by using the boats, Khan warns them to be careful as there are rumors of monstrous creatures lurking inside the lands. The group makes it into the cave, and Kai reveals that he took the insect queen from Khan, trying to impress his girlfriend. At the same time, Yuk notices a strange fish inside the river and tries to touch it, but the animal rushes towards the man and bites him on the finger, leaving blood in the water. Very soon, hundreds of man-eating fish charges towards the group and begins jumping out from the water, trying to devour everything in sight. They try to defend their lives and fight back by using their weapons, but the animal's numbers are too great, and Kai gets knocked into the river while trying to save Lin. The fishes quickly notice the man's presence and swarms right behind him while Kai paddles desperately towards the boat. Luckily, the man is able to climb back onto safety before the fishes devour him as the team tries their best to kill the vicious creatures that follow behind. Eventually, the group comes to an area where countless mummified bodies are hanging on the ceiling of the cave and they all begin to drop into the water after being disrupted by the people's presence. Strangely, once the bodies have entered the river, thousands of little creatures begin to emerge from the carcasses and fly towards the group. The organisms attack the team and bite them furiously, while the people are having a very difficult time trying to defend against the swarm. With no other choice, the professor gives the team multiple flamethrowers, allowing them to more effectively handle the enemy's numbers. They are able to hold back the flying parasites as they barbecue the creatures and feed them to the fishes. However, the fuel in their weapons begin to run out quickly and they still haven't reached the exit. Bay decides to improvise and throws one of their bombs into the swarm while Shirley shoots a flame arrow and hits the explosive, creating a large explosion that knocks away the parasites. The shockwave pushes their boat into different directions, splitting the group into separate areas with alarming speed. The professor's boat breaks into pieces while the team drops into the water, but base comrades are rushed out from the caves and thrown into a waterfall, where they drop down into the rivers below. Luckily, the three are able to recover from the fall and swim towards land, where they continue forward into the unknown. At the same time, the professor and his team have all 
also made it out from the cave, but sees the terrifying sight where numerous bodies are mummified and kept in large containers. The professor tries to contact Bay by using the radio system, but all the gadgets are not functioning after being submerged inside the river. Bay has also found something strange after venturing deeper into the forest, noticing a giant footprint that's clearly made recently. Suddenly, they hear a terrifying roar from behind and turns around, only to see a giant lizard appearing and jumping towards them. The massive creature appears to be hostile in nature and displays incredible strength. It turns the attention to Shirley and begins chasing the woman closely behind, destroying everything in sight as she tries desperately to escape. The monster eventually forces the girl inside a tree and she begins shooting arrows at the creature, but the attacks are useless as they fail to penetrate the lizard's skin. She's saved when Bay jumps onto the monster from behind and tries to stab it using his knife, giving the woman a chance to run and telling her to find the professor. The giant lizard quickly throws Bay off its back using tremendous force and begins charging at the man. Meanwhile, the professor's group is also attacked by a similar creature as he chases them with the intent to kill. The old man quickly falls behind from his team as he clearly spent too much time on computers and not enough on cardio. Luckily, before the creature can devour the professor, an arrow is shot towards the monster and hits it right in the eye. It turns out that Shirley has found her team members and she tries to save them by luring the creature away. The monster chases the woman relentlessly and she eventually sees Bay running away as well. The two runs directly at each other and jumps on the tree vine in the last moment, causing the creatures to have a head-on collision and knock themselves out. The teams have finally found each other and the professor realizes that the creatures may have very good hearings but their eyesights are very poor. However, their conversations are quickly interrupted when the giant lizards recover and begins charging at the team, forcing them to run once again. The group arrives on the edge of a cliff and the main character tells them to jump like in every Hollywood movie, but they quickly regret it after realizing that instead of water, they jumped into a valley of rocks. After tumbling down and surviving the fall, Kai was able to dodge his girlfriend like he was dodging child support and allows the woman to faceplant right on the ground. Before the man can apologize for his natural instincts, they notice the growling beside them and realizes that they have landed right in the nest of the giant lizards. The monsters approach them with hostility, leaving them with nowhere to run, but the creatures are quickly stunned when they hear the thunders from the approaching clouds. Apparently, their sensitive hearings are also their greatest weakness, which allows the team to escape temporarily. As they continue forwards, the professor notices what appears to be a floating island in the far distance and suggests that that is where they should go to. By using the thunder's noise, the group is able to run away from the giant monsters and cross the field, but their cover is quickly blown when the lightning stops. With no other choice, Shirley decides to lure the animals towards her by shooting arrows at them and quickly runs away from her team. She charges at the end of a cliff and hides underneath, causing the lizards to fall one by one due to their poor sights. The group runs towards the floating island as the rest of the monsters pursue them closely behind. They run on top of a giant tree trunk which appears to be the only way onto the island, but the giant monsters also begin to climb on board, breaking the bridge by their massive weight. Bay tells the group to run onto the island while he stays behind, trying to stop the lizards by breaking the tree trunks. Eventually, he's able to snap the wood, causing everything to collapse underneath. He runs quickly towards his friends and jumps in the last moment, barely escaping the fall as he watches the monsters drop into the abyss. The group looks back and realizes the beauty of this place, as the massive island flows magically on top of everything else. At night, the group is finally able to relax after running the whole day, and the girls decide to go for a swim inside the glowing pond as they dive into the waters. The boys also join in on the fun and jumps into the pond, leaving only Bay and the professor behind. After seeing the youth and happiness of his team, the old man questions why they don't simply go back and accept their fate. He thinks that they should enjoy the time that they have left instead of running into even more danger and possibly getting killed. Bay tells the man that he refuses to give up and believes that they can definitely remove the curse and get back the life that's rightfully theirs. The next morning, the group wakes up after a peaceful night and prepares for their journey into the flower fields below. They cross the vast lands after climbing down from the island, and the scenery eventually changes to something more haunting as they venture deeper into the mountains. As they approach the walls, the team realizes that it's filled with coffins that spans all the way to the top of the mountain. 
Suddenly, they hear a bubbling noise from behind and turns around, only to see a giant creature jump out towards them, which appears to resemble a giant lobster. The professor explains that this creature is immune to pain as it lacks any nervous system, and it can heal very quickly inside the water. The team goes into their formation and tries to wear the creature down by attacking it individually using their weapons, but the monster does not flinch at all as it continues to retaliate and knocks the people away like ragdolls. The men try to hold the lobster in place by using their ropes, but the creature is too powerful and breaks away from their trap easily. The monster eventually turns the attention towards Lin and charges towards her, forcing the woman to run desperately to the walls as she tries to escape the onslaught by climbing the coffins. However, the girl is not able to escape from the monster's reach and gets knocked away as she falls from the height, but Kai is able to catch her in the last moment and save her from the crash. The monster charges in right away to attack and Lin tries to save her boyfriend, but they're both knocked away and crashes into the walls. The creature turns the attention towards the others as they try to lure the monster away from the injured. The team is able to trap the monster by using their ropes again, but this time they planted bombs in the area which explodes continuously causing the stone pillars to smash into the creature. Surprisingly, the monster is able to survive the attack and turns away from the humans, trying to run into the water where it can heal its wounds. Bay rushes inside the lake as well and swims towards the fleeing animal, eventually able to grab onto the creature. The man cuts himself using the blade and spills the blood inside the lake, attracting all the man-eating fishes towards the area as he rushes towards land. The little creatures are able to devour the giant lobster in a matter of seconds as the main character escapes the lake just in time. When the chaos is finally over, the group sees Lin walking towards them slowly but quickly realizes that something is wrong as the woman faints and drops towards the ground. They rush towards their teammate and finds out that Lin is mortally wounded after trying to protect her boyfriend from the monster. She tells Kai to not be sad and promise her that he'll live on for both of them after removing the curse like they planned. The woman dies with a smile while looking at Kai as the man embraces her and screams in agony. The team puts her body inside one of the coffins and allows the current to take her to the entrance, but their morales are greatly affected after seeing their teammates' death. The professor tells them to give up and enjoy their lives, instead of throwing it away and chasing something that may not even be real. Bay disagrees and plans to continue on, stating that if they give up now, then their friend would have died for nothing. The team all eventually pull together and agrees with their leader, but the old man is greatly disappointed at their choice and decides to leave, promising to bury their bodies afterwards. The group eventually makes it onto the mountain by climbing the coffins and arrives into a garden that appears to be celestial in nature as the buildings conceal inside the fog. They arrive to the center of the area and sees the dragon ore being held by a giant statue but quickly hears a series of noises from below as the coffins are broken into pieces by something from inside. An army of scorpion monsters appear in front of them as the creatures proceed to corner the group in hostility, giving them nowhere to run. The team begins to fight the monsters by using their weapons but are pushed back quickly by the enemy's numbers. They try to open a way for the main character and Bay runs towards the giant statue and grabs the dragon orb. He runs back to his team, but soon realizes something wrong as the ground begins shaking like an earthquake. The bells all begin to ring, and surprisingly, the scorpion monsters all turn back in fear and runs for their lives. Rain clouds begin to form, covering the sun very quickly, and the mountain starts to break apart while a giant serpent emerges from the falling rocks, roaring furiously at the people. Bay tells his team to run quickly and they try to escape the garden, but the monster is too fast and blocks the way immediately as it surrounds the people. It attacks by using its giant mouth, sending the group in the air by the shockwave alone and making a huge crater in the process. The giant snake destroys the buildings nearby as it recovers and screams furiously at the team, causing them to run in fear. The monster attacks them again, causing Kai to fall and drop the jar with the queen inside, breaking a hole in the glass. The firebugs are able to sense their leader's presence and begin swarming towards the mountains altogether. They quickly cross the fields and passes the floating island, eventually arriving at the entrance of the garden as they fly towards the giant snake. Bay sees this and conjures up an idea, rushing towards the queen bug and grabs it from the ground. 
The man charges at the giant snake as all the firebugs follow him closely behind, but the serpent attacks right in front of him, causing Bei to fall and break the container. The queen slowly flies away as the group watches hopelessly, but the bug is caught in the last moment by Professor Sun who decided to come back for his team. The old man charges towards the giant snake as his hand begins to engulf in flames, eventually spreading across his body as he jumps inside the monster's mouth. The firebugs follow closely behind and flies into the snake's body, burning the giant creature from the inside as he screams in pain. The monster struggles and breaks the mountains apart, releasing all the water into the hills below. The group tries desperately to run from the collapsing rocks, eventually jumping down into the waters below and escapes danger just in time. They head back to their village after retrieving Lin's body and creating tombs for their friends so that they can finally rest in peace. Bei combines the two magical items together, and the dragon orb begins to levitate in the air while the celestial bone glows in bright light. To their surprise, the objects did not cure them of their curse, but instead reveals the clues to a new location where more danger is surely waiting for them in the unknowns. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.